And greetings, friends. Today I want to talk to you about Revelation 6, chapter, verses 9 through 11, that says that when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O, whole, how long, o Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? White robes are given unto them. And it was said that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now many people take this to mean that uh, John saw in heaven Christians that have come and gone and they've died and they went to heaven. So they think that this is proof that when we die we go to heaven. You know it's interesting why instead of automatically putting their ideas into the Bible, that they don't explain and expound what these scriptures really mean. They just read that and then automatically insert their belief of heaven into these scriptures. Instead of explaining why it says that these souls are under the altar. It doesn't say that they're in heaven. It says here, I saw under the altar the souls of them. What does that mean? Uh, why are they told to rest yet for a little season? I thought heaven was a heavenly retirement, eternal bliss. But it says here that they should rest for a little season. Why don't they expound and explain these things? And why is it that only the slain, the martyred, are only mentioned in these chapters? I mean, millions of Christians that have come and gone through the centuries they were never persecuted. Millions of Christians have died of natural causes, yet they're not mentioned in these scriptures. Only the slain are mentioned. Why? Why aren't these scriptures expound and explained? Well, let's go through it in the Bible, and we will see what this is actually telling us. Now, it says here that I saw under the altar the souls of them. Now, that word soul can also be translated lives. Bullinger's Companion Bible says, used of a man as an individual, just as we speak of a ship going down with every soul on board, or as of many lives being lost in a railway accident. This occurs 14 times, and it is rendered soul. And it gives you a whole bunch of scriptures and where you can look it up, and that's Appendix 110 of Bullinger's Companion Bible. So it should read, I saw the souls or lives of them that were slain for the word of God and the testimony which they held. And that is significant. And we'll get to that a little later on in the broadcast. Now, second, we must understand that this is all in vision. Now, these visions, there's a meaning for these visions. In Samuel Ebeciochi's book, Immortality or Resurrection, he explains that Visions are apocalyptic pictures and are not to be meant to be photographs of actual realities, but symbolic representations of almost unimaginable spiritual reality. So these visions are actually symbolic of events that are taking place. Now he says of this scene, it says here, there are no souls of martyrs in heaven squeezed at the base of an altar. The whole scene is simply a symbolic representation designed to reassure those facing martyrdom and death that ultimately they would be vindicated by God. So this is a symbol of martyrdom that is taking place. And where does martyrdom take place? Up in heaven? No. It takes place on this earth. And this comes to the third point I want to make. This third point is the correct context of the events of the visions that are taking place in this chapter. When you look at the four horsemen, we see the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and the pale horse. These events are taking place on the earth. Deception, war, famine, and death don't take place in heaven. It takes place on this earth. And if you notice verse 8, it says, Power was given unto them, that's the four horsemen, over the fourth part of the earth. 
So these sequence of events are taking place on this earth and we must follow the logical sequence of events that are taking place which is also taking place in the fifth seal and also the sixth seal. You will see that these events are taking place on this earth. So this uh, event of the fifth seal is not taking place up in heaven. It's taking place on this earth. And it's talking about the martyrdom of saints, as it plainly says, I saw the souls or the lives of them that were slain for the word of God and the testimony which they held. These are martyrs. Now, what is the altar? It doesn't say it's in heaven. It says, I saw under the altar. Now, when you notice, when you understand the language that's taking place here, and you look at other places in the Bible, you can understand what this is telling us. It says that there are lives under the altar. Now, when we look at the law of sacrifices, the Levites were commanded to offer bullocks upon the altar of sacrifice, and their blood was to be poured at the bottom of the altar. And you can read that in Leviticus, the fourth chapter, and verse 7. So this altar that's, that we see here is an altar of sacrifice. Now it says here that the souls of them that were slain for the word of God was under the altar. Now if you notice, if you go to Leviticus the 17th chapter, verse 11, it says this, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your soul. That word life, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, is nephesh, and it means soul. Soul, life, and the soul of the flesh, the life of the flesh, is in the blood. The blood of the sacrifices was, was poured at the bottom of the altar. So really, what we're seeing here and if you notice, in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, verse 12, it says about, about the Messiah, the lamb being slain, his, he, was poor, he poured out his soul unto death. And we know that Jesus Christ died of shed blood, and that his shed blood makes an atonement for our souls. For, so his soul, his blood, was poured, unto, poured out unto death. And this is what we're reading here in Revelation, the sixth chapter and verse nine. I saw under the altar the souls of them, or the lives of them, and the life of the soul is in the blood. So we are seeing their blood being poured out unto death under the altar of sacrifice. And that's what it really means. Now, in Romans, the 12th chapter, verse one, the Apostle Paul says that we must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So what we're seeing here is a martyrdom of saints, and they are sacrificing their lives for their belief in Jesus Christ. And it says in Revelation, the 12th chapter and verse 11, that they love not their lives unto death. They are willing to sacrifice themselves for their faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So what we're seeing here is people being sacrificed. They are sacrificing themselves for their faith and their blood, their soul, their lives are being poured out unto death under the base, the bottom of the altar. So this is all symbolism. All, it's all in symbolism of the martyrdom of saints. People sacrificing themselves, sacrificing themselves for their faith in Jesus, and it's taking place on this earth. And this altar, where is this altar? Well, this altar, if you notice, when God told the Israelites to make a sanctuary, a sanctuary so they, they can offer these sacrifices, God told them in Exodus the 20th chapter and verse 24, to make an altar of the earth you shall make unto me. And you shall sacrifice thereon the burnt offerings and the peace offerings and so on. So the altar was made out of the earth. Now notice what Sarah, Sarah Peck says in her book, The Path to the Throne of God, 
on page 63. It says, the court of the sanctuary is the place where the victims were slain whose blood was to be ministered in the sanctuary. And the court, in the court, had the altar where the burnt offerings were made. They were slain there and then offered on the altar, and their blood was poured at the bottom of the altar. Now, if you notice, Jesus Christ was the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. That's in Revelation, the 13th chapter and verse 8. So the altar and the court of the where the altar stands is this earth where the sacrifices, people sacrificing themselves, are slain on this earth. All right, let's move on to verse 10. And then it says, They cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Remember, this is a vision. This is all in symbolism. This is the same language that we read in Genesis, the fourth chapter, and verse 9, where it says, The Lord said to Cain, after he slew his brother, Where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Then verse 10, God said to him, What have you done? The voice of your bro brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. Now obviously this is in metaphor because blood doesn't have a mouth. This is all in metaphor. It's speaking of vengeance. And this is a metaphor for vengeance. And we see the same language here where the martyrs are saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? In other words, their blood is crying from the ground to God asking for vengeance. This is all in metaphor. This is all in symbolism. Now, is there a connection between the altar and the ground where the blood cries? Well, actually, there is. When you compare all the scriptures... The sacrifices are poured unto the dust of the ground, and then from the ground, the blood cries to God for vengeance. And so here we see the connection of the blood being poured on the ground, and then the blood from the ground crying out to God for vengeance. And so this is all in symbolism. And then when we put all the scriptures together, we can get the complete story of what God is trying to tell us here in tell us here of what's happening uh, during the fifth seal. And this is this fifth seal is the martyrdom phase of the Great Tribulation. Now, then it says that these martyrs were told to rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants are killed as they were. So these martyrs that have come and gone, that are in their graves, death is likened unto a sleep. And God is telling them, just rest just for a little while longer while this martyrdom of saints takes place. And then after that martyrdom phase of the Great Tribulation is over, as it says, as they were should be fulfilled, once that's over, God is going to resurrect them and they will be resurrected to eternal life, and they will inherit the kingdom of God that's going to take place on this earth. So, to say that these scriptures prove that when we die, we go to heaven, is just another Bible misconception. 